Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do another edition of If You Like This Book, Try That One, or If You Like That Book, Try This One. Honestly, it actually goes both ways. My way of thinking about this is that if you have read the book that I read and liked it, you might like some of the books I suggest, but if you've read one of the books that I suggest and you haven't read the book that I read and am using as a touch point for recommendations, you might like that one. I have done two of these videos. It was kind of my goal for this year to try to recommend books based on every book that I read, and I got away from it a little bit. So I did it in a Friday Reads video earlier in the year, which I will link in the description box down below. And then I did another one of these videos last month where I went through the next 10 books that had not been covered in that previous one. So I'm gonna do another 10 books that I have read in 2021 today and try to make some recommendations based on them. Just a quick note, if you didn't see any of the previous videos, my way of thinking about recommendations is that sometimes you want a recommendation because you enjoy a particular subject matter and you want something that's gonna be pretty close, but sometimes you just want something that's in the spirit of the book. So I'm gonna to try to balance a little bit of both, books that are close to the book that I read or books that are in the same spirit, but not necessarily in this exact same wheelhouse. I am also going to try to do a mix of known books and lesser known books because if you are sort of a casual reader, there may be some more popular books that you have not heard of, but if you are an avid reader, you've probably heard of those. So I'm gonna to try to have some deeper recommendations as well. But we have 10 books to get through and a lot of recommendations. So let's get started. The first book that was not covered in my last, if you liked this, try that video, was the final revival of Opal and Nev. I'm a big fan of this book. It is told in the style of an oral history. It is also the story of a musical duo, but really it's also a story about race and celebrity and who gets believed in the media and who gets to tell the story officially. So there are a couple of different ways I could approach this for a recommendation. The first one I'm gonna go with is Daisy Jones and the Six. This is the most obvious parallel to the final revival of Opal and Nev, because this is also a book told in an oral history style about a musical group in roughly the same time period that produced one hit album and then kind of faded away over time. In that regard, these books are strikingly similar in terms of plot. This one obviously does not have the racial element. The band Daisy Jones and the Six is sort of modeled after Fleetwood Mac. And I listened to this on audio and the audio production is Fantastic. Jennifer Beals does Daisy. They have a whole cast performing all of the different parts so that it actually sounds like an oral history. It's really good. I will say if I had to choose, I'd go with the final revival of Opal and Nev if you haven't read either one of them. I think there's a little detail about the ending in Daisy Jones at the Six that I wasn't too keen on. However, I think it is a pretty solid recommendation based on the final revival of Opal and Nev. The next one I want to recommend is, of course, my beloved The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia, because it is my mission in life to recommend this book as many times as possible. It also explores the idea of race and expectation, especially when it comes to black women. That is probably a bit of a tenuous through line to the final arrival of Opal and Nev, but it's definitely there in the book. And I think it is very likely that if you enjoyed the final revival of Opal and Nev, you will also enjoy The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. The next one is Girl, One Another by Bernadine Nivaristo. This is obviously a popular book. It was the co-winner of the Booker Prize. Lots of avid readers probably heard of this, but if you are not a really avid reader or you don't really follow prizes too much, this may be something new to you. I think the biggest comparator for this book and the final revival of Opal and Nev is that Girl, Woman, Other tells a bunch of different stories and voices and backgrounds and experiences of women of color in the UK. And in that regard, it is a perfect companion to it. I am a big fan of this book. I read it last year and really enjoyed it a lot. And the next one, the final one for the final arrival of Opal and Nev is The Women of Brewster Place, which is actually something that is on my TBR. I have not read it yet. But again, it comes down to that idea of women of color telling their, st their stories and sharing their experiences of life and the world. And I keep hearing really great things about this book. I need to get around to reading it very soon. The next book 
that I read in 2021 is actually a volume of poetry, Bite Hard by Justin Chin. I kind of debated if I should include this book in this or not, because I traditionally do not read poetry. I am kind of intimidated by poetry. I feel like I don't understand it. So I'm trying to dip my toe into those waters. I read one volume of poetry last year and I've read one so far this year. So I feel like I'm not super qualified to recommend a lot of poetry. But then I remembered that the spirit of this is that I don't have to recommend books that are one-to-one -one comparisons. I don't necessarily need a volume of poetry to recommend something based on this. Now, I liked parts of this. I also did not like parts of this. So what I might say is maybe instead go with the book, the poetry that I read last year, which was My Alexandria by Mark Doty. Both of them are published in the 90s. Both of them deal in direct and indirect ways with the specter of AIDS, which was obviously a, still a huge concern in the 90s and continues to be today, and the idea of living with it. And they handle it in very different ways, but I responded much more deeply and profoundly to my Alexandria than Bite Hard. I would say something from my TBR is Postcolonial Love Poem by Natalie Diaz. This just won the Pulitzer Prize for poetry, and it is something I really have my eye on. I haven't read it, so I can't say if it's exactly a match for Bite Hard, but it seems like if you like the style of poetry of that, you might like Postcolonial Love Poem as well. And then the final book I'm going to go with is not a volume of poetry at all. I'm branching out. This is another book from my TBR. I have not read it. It's Breakfast on Pluto by Patrick McCabe. This is a Booker Prize finalist, and it's also a book that's a little bit in your face, it has an LGBTQ element, and perhaps there are aspects of it that have not aged super well, which I think you can also say about Bite Hard, but I haven't read it, so I don't really want to judge it too hard. I've also heard really great things about it, so I feel like it is something that is in the same wheelhouse and could be a good match if you are into that. The next book that I read in 2021 was Homeland Elegies by Ayad Akhtar. I had been really excited to read this book, and I didn't quite gel with it in a way that I thought I would. It's an interesting book because it is a fusion of truth and fiction. It is essentially a fictionalized version of Ayad Akhtar's life, and you can't really tell as a reader where the line is. It's extremely blurry. It is also the story of a family that immigrates to the United States. It is also a very profound story about being Muslim in America, particularly after 9-11. And there are a lot of different approaches that I could take to making recommendations based on this book. Here's what I came up with. The first one is a book that takes the idea of a true story and fictionalizes it. And I responded to it much more than Homeland Elegies. It is The Good Lord Bird by James McBride. This is also a book about the way in which race or religion can inhibit your identity or the expression of your identity. And it is also a funny book. It takes the true story of the abolitionist John Brown and spins a yarn from there that is, I think, deeply affecting and memorable, and I appreciated it a lot. So because of the element of race and the blend of fact and fiction, I thought this would be a interesting book to explore. The next one is actually going to be coming up again later because this is also a book that I read in 2021 and I will have recommendations for it later in the video. But The Bad Muslim Discount by Syed M. Masood. This is very deeply a book about the experience of being Muslim in the United States and it even deals with 9-11 a little bit. When you come down to it, the books are very different in tone. However, they are very much in the same ballpark when it comes to that idea about religion and expectation and immigration. And I also just really loved this book, kind of similar to The Secret Lives of Church Ladies, and I want more people to read it. So definitely, if you have read or and enjoyed Homeland Elegies, this is probably something you would also find interesting. And if you've been thinking about Homeland Elegies, I actually preferred this one, so maybe think about this one instead. The final book I want to recommend based on Homeland Elegies is a book that's from my TBR. It's Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday. This is a novel told in three different parts, and each part deals with the Iraq War. 
and therefore it also thematically deals with the idea of 9-11 and the treatment of Iraqi American citizens in the United States. So I haven't read it, which means I can't 100% speak to its quality. However, I've heard really good things about it and it does definitely appear to be in the zone of Homeland Elegies. The next book that I read in 2021 was Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. I was really excited about this book because I've been a fan of two other books of his that I have read. I enjoyed it, not as much as I had hoped that I would. So in this instance, I would say if you're thinking about this one and you have not read any other books by Kazuo Ishiguro, maybe read Never Let Me Go instead. I really like this book. It is thematically similar to Clara and the Sun, but I think they depart in key ways. So if you've read Never Let Me Go and did not like it, you might actually like Clara and the Sun better. So it's a two-way street here. But I think there's enough of a difference in tone and approach, and I personally prefer what Never Let Me Go did. Just saying. The next book that I would recommend for Clara and the Sun is actually something I do not own and which is on my TBR. It is The Heart Goes Last by Margaret Atwood. I was just being told about this book by Charlie, who's one of the owners of Montana Book Company, and they really recommended it. It sounds like a very resonant book in that sort of Margaret Atwood way of writing about your time without specifically writing about your time. And I think that definitely ties in with what Kazuo Ishiguro does. And you really can't get better than Kazuo Ishiguro and Margaret Atwood. I think. Obviously, there are a lot of Margaret Atwood titles that I could have gone with. There are certainly a lot of more popular ones. You could easily substitute The Blind Assassin, The Handmaid's Tale, Oryx and Crake, anything like that. I think she is an author who is kind of perfect as a comparator to this as well. I just wanted to go with one that maybe is a little less known and sounds like it would fit in the universe of what Kazuo Ishiguro is doing in Clara and the Sun. The next book that I read in 2021 was Nomadland by Jessica Bruder. This is obviously the book that was the basis of the film, which just won Best Picture at the Oscars last month. And there are, again, a lot of directions that you could go with this. The book is very focused on the idea of income equality, especially following the economic collapse and how people respond to that. So one book that I think would be a great match is Evicted by Matthew Desmond, which is about essentially the housing crisis and how difficult it is to get housing and the sort of the epidemic of evictions that have been happening, particularly since the economic crisis of 2008. It's a really good book. I believe it is a Pulitzer Prize winner, but I could be wrong about that. And it is also very deeply researched. It takes a different approach. Jessica Bruder writes herself into the book and does not pretend to not be part of the story. Matthew Desmond takes a step back and kind of deliberately erases his own footprints throughout the book and only in the afterward you find out how involved he was in the story because he wants the, you to focus on the stories of the people that he is interviewing about the subject matter. And it's a, it's a really good book. It will make you angry, but then so can Nomadland as well. And because so much of Nomadland is about Amazon and so much of the conversation that has happened about Nomadland since has been about Amazon, by the way, I will link my video where I compare the movie and the book and talk about whether or not the movie copped out on Amazon down below in the description box. But I feel like it'd be obvious to recommend how to resist Amazon and why the fight for local economies, data privacy, fair labor, independent bookstores, and people powered future by Danny Kane. Danny Kane is the owner of the Raven bookstore in Lawrence, Kansas, and obviously a big proponent of independent bookstores and not shopping at Amazon, as am I. So I can't wait to read this, and I feel like it is a natural companion to Nomadland, the book. I would also recommend Made, Hard Work, Low Pay, and A Mother's Will to Survive by Stephanie Land. As an added bonus point, that book is about Stephanie Land's struggle to get by economically after having a baby and sort of being forced into low-wage employment. And ultimately, she moves to Missoula. And she still lives here. So just there's an added personal connection to that book for me. But it's also a really great book. It is something that will kind of make you angry because of the way people treat her and blame her for the situation in which she finds herself and her own inability to get out of that situation for a very long time. And it's really about the vicious cycle of poverty and how one thing leads to another thing. And you just it, it, it becomes like being stuck in a tidal pool that you cannot get out of. It's a really good book, and I would definitely recommend it if you are a fan of Nomadland. 
and vice versa again. And in terms of a fictional book, I would recommend The Turner House by Angela Flournoy, because that is a book that is very specifically about the political and racial and economic structure of Detroit over the last 50 to 60 years. And it is a little bit about the Detroit race riots as well. It is about a black family who owns a house. And now in the present day, at the time the book is set, the children of the matriarch and the patriarch are trying to decide what to do with the house because the mortgage on the house is worth so little that they can't really offload it in any feasible way. So it's a novel, but it gets at a lot of these complex issues and it's a very good one as well. I recommend it. The next book that I read in 2021 was The Yield by Tara June Winch. So far, this is my favorite read of 2021. It is an Australian book. It is a book about Indigenous people and the Indigenous experience and the ways in which Indigenous people have been wronged. So again, there are a lot of areas where I could have gone with this one, and I've gone in a couple of different directions. The first one is The Rain Heron by Robbie Arnott, because Tara June Winch is Australian, Robbie Arnott is Australian. If you're just into Australian literature or good literature, this was a good book that I read recently. I don't have my physical copy of it because my foster son is at least allegedly reading it right now. We'll see how that goes, but it's something that I am now pushing onto a lot of people. We bought another copy this past weekend so we could give it as a gift to someone. I just really enjoyed this book, and if you're into Australian literature, check out that one as well. The next book that I would recommend is The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee by David Troyer. This is a nonfiction book about the indigenous experience in America, and it takes the premise that people tend to think that Native history basically stopped at Wounded Knee because of the book Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee. And it details at great length and in great detail, sometimes agonizingly so because it is a little bit painful, everything that has happened and been done to Native people in the United States by the United States government since then. And it might make you angry, but it is a really important story. And I think after reading something like The Yield, it is important to take the lessons from that book and apply them here because the experience is remarkably similar given how far apart we are and the different makeups of our country. And I would also recommend The Autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman by Ernest Gaines. This is about a woman who is born toward the end of slavery and survives 100 years to the civil rights movement in the United States. And during the course of her life, she sees the end of slavery and the beginning of sharecropping and moves into the Jim Crow era and then the civil rights struggle. And it shows how the more things change, sometimes the more they stay the same. And governments, institutions, and the people in power will find other ways to keep you down. And that, I think, is very much in the spirit of The Yield by Tara June Winch, so I would recommend it as well. The next book that I read in 2021 was The Mountain Short Stories by Paul Yoon. And again, there are a lot of different directions I could have gone with this. The first book I'm going to go with is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong, because Paul Yoon is a really fantastic writer. Ocean Vuong is a fantastic writer. And if you're a fan of that beautiful writing, I feel like these books are kind of companions in that regard. So maybe check that out if you haven't already. The next one that I would recommend is A Manual for Cleaning Women by Lucia Berlin because this is a collection of short stories. The writing is fantastic. I love this. This is one of my favorite short story collections. Lucia Berlin was an unappreciated writer in her time, but she inspired a lot of what are considered the best short story writers of the current era. And I, I don't know why I'm flipping through the book. I just love it. So apparently I'm starting to flip through it all over again. It's just a collection of short stories that I love. So I would take any opportunity to recommend it to people. So here I am recommending it to you right now. The final one that I would recommend based on The Mountain by Paul Yoon is A Good Scent from A Strange Mountain by Robert Olin Butler. This is a Pulitzer Prize winner. It is another collection of short stories. And one thing that's really interesting, and I forgot to mention this with A Manual for Cleaning Women, The Mountain has a very specific tone and feel to it. It is very lonely. It is very sad. Lucia Berlin lives in that wheelhouse, and you can find it again in A Good Scent from a Strange Mountain, which also deals with war. Similar to The Mountain, this one deals with the Vietnam War and the after effects of that and some of the trauma of that war, which is very similar to The Mountain by Paul Yoon. So I definitely recommend this one. I read it a long time ago and I have wanted to revisit it for a while now. The next book that I read in 2021 was Paradise Nevada by Dario Diofebe. Now I ultimately skimmed the last half of this book. So 
I am going to recommend a couple of things instead of Paradise Nevada. Maybe some things that do similar things, but a little bit differently. The first one is really Tom Perotta. Some of his earlier works like Election or Little Children. These are probably his best works, my most my favorites of his. One thing that he does is he tells kind of quirky stories about people who are grasping and searching and trying to find something and not necessarily getting there and just bumbling their way through it. And that is very much in the spirit of Paradise Nevada. He also has large cast of characters that he moves through as he gets through the story, which is also in the style of Paradise Nevada. But if I'm being honest, Tom Parada does it better. That's blunt, but it's real. The next book that I would recommend based on Paradise Nevada is Unsheltered by Barbara Kingsolver. This is a book that has a couple of different characters in a family, and it moves among them in order to tell the overall story of the book. And it really deals with people who are struggling economically to get by and striving for better. And that is also something that ties back to Paradise Nevada by Dario Diofebe. So definitely going with that one. And the other one I'll recommend, I'd be impressed if anybody has read this because I don't know anybody other than me who has. It's The Garden of Last Days by Andre Dubas III. I hope I am pronouncing the name correctly. I forgot to look it up before filming this video. Apologies. But this is a book that also has a really large cast of characters and their stories kind of bounce along across each other and intersect with each other as the book goes along. It is the story of people in Florida. So it leaves Las Vegas, but goes to Florida in the days before 9-11 and tells a very complicated story of their lives and how they build up to disaster, which is, again, very much in the wheelhouse of Paradise Nevada by Dario Diofebe. It's not a perfect book. It's flawed. But I finished this one and I didn't really finish Paradise Nevada. So there you go. We have two more books to go. And the next one that I read in 2021 was The Bad Muslim Discount. We're back to this. One of my favorite reads of the year. I really, really enjoyed it. The Rain Heron is also one of my favorite reads of the year, but we'll get to that in the next. If you like this, try that. And what could I recommend based on this? The first one is A Woman Is No Man by Itaf Rum, which very much deals with the idea of religion and female identity, which is one of the main plot lines of The Bad Muslim Discount and the violence and the desperation that it can lead to. And I would say A Woman Is No Man is a more serious book than The Bad Muslim Discount, which balances that out with some humor, but it is still definitely in the wheelhouse. And I would be Utterly remiss if I did not take an opportunity to recommend A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza, which was my favorite read two years ago. I just really love this book. It is about a family uh, who is Muslim, and it is about how they came to be estranged from one another. And it is about their religious identity, their American identity, and so many things. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. And I can't recommend it enough. So here I am once again saying, if you have not already read A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza, please check it out. And then the final book that I'm going to be covering in this edition of If You Like This, Try That, is How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherie Jones. There are, again, a lot of different directions that I could go with this. The first one I'm going to recommend is Homegoing by Yad Jassi, which is really just a book I love recommending to people because I love it so much. It is so smart and so good and tells a story through a bunch of different chapters. Not entirely the same way that How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House, but I think they are similar enough that it works to do a recommendation based on that. The next one that I would recommend is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. This is also a book that has violence at its center and tells the story of that. It is based on a true story. And I feel like if you like How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House, you will probably like The Nickel Boys. If you have liked The Nickel Boys, you'll probably like How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House. It deals with race, it deals with violence, it deals with a lot of bigger issues in its story, and uh, I would definitely recommend either one of them. The Nickel Boys was the Pulitzer Prize winner last year. How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House is a finalist for the Women's Prize this year. So, those are the books that I am recommending right now based on what I have read in 2021. If you have alternate recommendations, please let's make the comment section down below a resource. If you have other thoughts, 
about this or about any of the books that I have talked about. I've talked about a lot of books. You know what to do. The comment section is down there. As always, I really appreciate your time. I am very grateful for that, especially if you've made it to this point. Thank you for that. And I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.